Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Those of you who have been following my videos might remember in the last two or three videos I was talking about different diseases that make swallowing a wee bit difficult for us and the food does not go down easily. Then we also spoke about different types of foods that are more likely to get stuck as compared to others. Today I'm going to talk about a few medical procedures that are undertaken in the hospital to make the swallowing a wee bit easier and to make the conditions which makes the swallowing difficult also make it slightly easier for the food to go down. So I've drawn a few uh, situations over here. So we got the food pipe or the esophagus and the stomach. Food pipe, esophagus or in the stomach, uh, esophagus and the stomach. Now in the first situation or the scenario, there is nothing wrong with the esophagus. Esophagus is normal. This red thing is the food uh, which is stuck in the lower part of the gullet or the esophagus or the food pipe. Now it's not going down. We have tried everything we could for the last few hours. Now what are the options that the hospital has? One of the options the hospital has is they put the camera down, which is the endoscope or and the gastroscope. So that green thing is the camera. They can put it down and try and push the food through. So that's one thing an endoscopist can do, is try and just shove something through further down. The other option is they can break the food down with their, uh, they got little instruments with which they can cut the food into smaller pieces and try and then push it through or wash it up and suck the little bits of the food up with the, with the camera. That's the second situation. Third situation is they can um, put a little like a fishing net, a basket down and that fishing net can grab the food and they can either pull it up through the mouth or push it down into the stomach. And once the food is in the stomach, the stomach will digest it and it will go through much easier. Now, the second situation is, in there is something wrong with the esophagus. Now, one thing that can be wrong with the esophagus, and if you don't know about this condition, then please watch my previous couple of videos, is the bottom end of the esophagus does not open up easily. And the reason it does not open up easily because there's a problem with the muscle. The muscle does not work properly. So the muscle stays shut and it can't open up when the food goes down. Normally when we eat, the muscle at the bottom of the esophagus or the food pipe will open up and let the food through. But if the muscle is not working normally because maybe the muscle is not normal or the nerves supplying the muscles is not normal, then it will not open and stay shut. So food comes and gets stuck on top of it, can't go through. Now, in that case, what the endoscopist can do, because the food is getting stuck, they put the camera down, which is the green thing, and through the camera, they put a little needle through, which is a little blue line I've drawn, and they can inject some stuff into it. And sometimes uh, the stuff they use is Botox, you know, which you know about, people use on their face for wrinkles, etc. Because what it does, it relaxes the muscle and make the swallowing a wee bit easier. Now, if that does not work because the condition is too advanced or it just doesn't work sometimes, then other option is the camera, the endoscopist can put the camera down and through the camera, which again uh, I made with the blue thing, is they put a balloon down. Yeah, like, like uh, you um, have a balloon which you blow up. S similarly, they can put a special balloon down with the camera and the balloon usually goes in when it is not blown up. And once the balloon is in the right place, which is in between the muscle, they can open up the balloon, stretch it up with air or some fluid and to a certain pressure or to a certain size, and it will stretch the gullet and makes things much easier to go through. Now, I got this uh, rug over here, which is I've rolled up into sort of a tube. If we think of this as a food pipe, yeah, it's got two layers in it. One is the inside layer, yeah, that you can see here, inside layer, and one is the outside layer that you can see over here. So there are two layers of this rug. Now, in achalasia, the problem is not the inside layer, which is lining of the gullet, so that's the hole of the gullet. Food goes down this way, from the mouth into the stomach. Now, 
this bit of the gullet, which is the muscle layer, which is the outside layer, is a problem in achalasia. Now, the uh, things we just talked about, injection with Botox and the balloon dilatation, the main object of the exercise of those treatments is to stretch this muscle layer. So muscle layer is pressing on the inside, which is keeping the gullet shut, to stretch on it with the balloon or inject Botox into it to relax it so things will go down a bit easier. Now, many a times these treatments don't work. Then the next option that is left is to treat this in a bit more aggressive fashion. And one of the ways of doing it is doing it surgically. So the patient is referred to the surgeons and surgeon go into the abdomen with a keyhole procedure. So three or four tiny little cuts on the tummy. They find the gullet above the stomach and what they do, they cut the muscle. They cut the outside layer of the muscle with scissors or whatever means they cut the muscle. So the muscle outside is split. When the muscle is split, then the outside bit opens up and the inside bit has got no pressure on it from outside to work. So the internal lining has no pressure from the muscle to keep it pressed. But then the endoscopist said, we are not going to be left behind by the surgeons. So what they came up with more recently in the past few, past few years is they go in with a camera inside the gullet. Yeah, with the camera inside the gullet. And from inside, they make a cut, make a hole in, in the lining and go in with the camera and cut the muscle from inside. Doing the same thing what the surgeons are doing with the keyhole procedure, but doing it with a camera. So not even a small little cut on the tummy. As I talked about in my previous video, there are other causes of blockage of the gullet. Now, if you look at this diagram, in this one, that's the camera, the green thing, and that's the gullet or the food pipe, that's our stomach. When the food can't go down, one of the reasons that we talked about is scarring of the gullet because of reflux, acid comes up, burns the gullet, it scars, and you got this narrowing in the gullet. You can see how tight the gullet is. Hardly anything will ever go through. So in that case, what some endoscopists do, they come down with the camera and they, with the instrument through the camera, you can see there's a little wire coming down and they can burn this thing in the middle and cut a hole through it. So the scarring can be cut through, like making a tunnel, um, uh, which has been blocked, uh, trying to bore a hole through it again. Now, in this condition, this diagram, again, the gullet and the stomach, in this I've shown two different problems. One is this benign scarring, which you can see it over here. So this is a scarring because of reflux. There's no cancer in it. Above it, I've shown this rough area, which is the cancer of the gullet. Now, both of these will cause narrowing of the gullet and the food will not go through. Now, in this case, what uh, some endoscopists do, that I've shown you a little diagram of a tree in a park. You might have seen in many parks, in gardens and parks, when you go out for a walk, around the tree, they put a little fence, like a little mesh around the tree. So when the tree is young, that mesh protects the tree. Same thing um, is made out of a very special material for human use. And it looks like a mesh metal with a camera it can be put down like you can see it over here that when the gullet is very very tight because of the scarring or because of tumor which is usually cancer if you look at the gullet that's the gullet that's what it looks like it's very thick the black area of the gullet is the wall of the gullet normally it's very thin it's only thin like this but in this case it has become very thick the thick could, thickness could be because of cancer could be because of scarring so the hole in the middle of the gullet, which I put down as red, is only really tiny. Normally, the hole would be like this. Yeah. But in this one, it is very, very tiny. So with the camera, they put a little mesh in the middle of it. You can see the red thing is a tiny little mesh, which they have put in there. Now, when the mesh is put in, it's a very smart mesh made out of very special material. And when they put the mesh in, it's very, very thin. So it's just like this, this thin. They put it in 
and when they're happy with the position of the mesh that it has gone through the blockage they leave the mesh in there and when they leave the mesh in there after a while the mesh starts expanding and you can see that the red thing which is the mesh has blown up into a much bigger size so food will start going down much easier unfortunately sometimes a condition is such that which cannot be cured which cannot be removed like in this case i put this condition which may be a tumor or a cancer or the patient is not fit enough for any of these procedures or there is a limited life left in that case the important thing is to give patient nutrition and to keep up the nutrition and to keep the fluids in a feeding tube can be put in so tube is put down from the nose with a camera into the stomach or it can be put down through the skin into the stomach or through the skin into the part of the small intestine now these tubes can be left in there for weeks or even months or sometimes even longer and they can be used for feeding uh, so these are the different ways in which the blockage of the gullet can be dealt with and i hope you found this video useful and thank you again for watching